Every time I see advertisements and new videos about new computer monitors, I have to chuckle. The past three to four years have seen high refresh rate and higher than 1080p resolution monitors flood the market. 75 hertz, 120 hertz, 144 hertz, 1440p, 4K. As a pixel junkie, I'm certainly not gonna complain about more frames or pixels, but most of these monitors are so boring. We spent 10 to 15 years with flat panel LCD monitors being far inferior to their CRT ancestors that I find it uh, hard to be excited for this modern technology to catch up. I'm Evos Vox and welcome back to Vox Talks Tech. I'm a huge tech head, but I still prefer those old tube monitors that people are think are just garbage or ancient relics. In this video, we'll be deep diving into why you should or shouldn't buy an old CRT monitor in 2018. Get those cathodes warming up and let's go. This video is gonna go deep, and there will be quite a bit of little technical details, but the important part is the fun. Exploring old technology, high refresh and frame rates, crazy resolutions, awesome looking screens, the early 2000s was a much cooler time for tech than today in some ways, and hopefully that shows here. Before we get too technical or complicated, I want to mention that PC CRT monitors are not the same as CRT TVs that you may have played your old Nintendo or PlayStation on. Without specialized signal conversion, which we will cover later in the video, most PC CRT monitors cannot view signals from composite or the old RCA cables in your old video game consoles. If you're just looking to get a more authentic retro games experience or fix, you'll likely want to pick up an old CRT TV. I posted a full video about that experience last year, which you can check out in the link in the video description. Let's get vocab and history out of the way first. CRT means cathode ray tube, and the displays work by shooting electrons from a cathode in the back of the box to the front. This is very different than how modern LCD and LED screens work. CRT monitors are big, bulky, heavy, and don't support modern video connections, so they're useless, right? Well, that common perception is only partially true. They do take up quite a bit more room than flat screens, but they aren't always huge. CRT monitors do have to fit on a desk, or at least a desk from the 90s and early 2000s, after all. CRTs are available in a plethora of sizes, colors, and even shapes. There's certainly a lot more personality to CRTs than the flat black design of just about every modern screen. And not all CRTs have bubbled out screens that are so prone to glares. There are a variety of flat screen models out there as well. CRT monitors with a flat Trinitron screen are highly sought after by enthusiasts. Unlike their TV counterparts, PC CRTs haven't had anywhere near as much of a resurgence in popularity for retro gaming. Mainly because people consider retro gaming to be just about old consoles, and a lot of progress has been made to keep old PC games playable, such as all of the efforts made by GOG.com. It's a site that sells new games, but also does a ton of legwork to make old games playable on modern hardware, and even includes digital versions of the original goodies included with the games. And I'd also recommend No Clips documentary on their work, linked in the description. But PC CRTs still have redeeming qualities that make them fun for enthusiasts, and just for those of us who prefer CRTs to LCDs in general, it naturally makes sense to extend that to computer use as well. There's a few generalized reasons that people prefer CRT monitors over LCDs. Nostalgia, proper compatibility with older PCs and older games, input latency, refresh rate and resolution flexibility, and perceived color depth or dynamic range. Technically, normal LCD or LED monitors and CRT monitors have the same dynamic range. This is referred to as standard dynamic range, or SDR, a light variance measurement, or maximum luminance of 100 nits. This has been the standard for a very long time, as it was based on the limits of CRT technology. Only recently are we seeing a change to this with HDR technology for new screens. The issue here is in how different types of screens actually display light. Despite having the same measured dynamic range, CRTs and plasma TVs actually appear to the eye to be better in this regard. Some often refer to this as the CRT's image having more color depth. Blacks are deeper, whites are brighter, colors pop more. LCDs more often look flat due to the backlighting's inability to vary brightness enough or on a per pixel basis like OLED 
and just can't go to pure black in the first place. This is even better when combined with how CRT monitors handle sharpness. Unlike CRT TVs that have a small number of vertical lines and can usually only accept up to 240p or 480i signals via noisy analog connections, CRT monitors are pure RGB via the HD15 or DE15 connector, also known as the VGA connector by most normal people. On rare occasions, a CRT monitor will have a different connector, such as the BNC RGBHV connections on this Impression 200VX monitor I have, but it's all meant for the same signals. Some of the more exotic older 3D and CAD workstations had bigger connectors, like this weird 13W3 here, but these aren't common finds from consumer sets. This expensive gateway I have has two VGA inputs and a USB hub. Crazy stuff. But this thing was 1000 bucks in the year 2000. Too bad it's dying and won't be usable. This means the monitor has a much cleaner image connection than your old TVs hooked up to your old game systems. Plus, CRTs don't have a fixed resolution in the first place. Depending on the maximum horizontal refresh rate and the video bandwidth, or pixel clock, of the monitor, a CRT monitor can display resolutions from 640x480 up to a phenomenal 2048x1536. My main CRT monitors with the 96kHz max horizontal rates can go up to 1600x1200 resolution at 80Hz, but this broken gateway monitor with a 121kHz max rate can do 1800x1440 at 80Hz. That's essentially the 4x3 aspect ratio of 1440p at 80Hz from the year 2000. This is starting to show why newer screen tech hasn't impressed me that much. They were, we were doing all of this 20 years ago. Hell, a commonly shared article when people first get into PC CRT monitors is this one showing that John Carmack was developing Quake on a 28 inch 1080p CRT monitor back in 1995. Unlike LCDs, however, CRTs generally remain sharp at non native resolutions. LCDs need to use the monitor scaler to scale up a lower resolution signal to the monitor's actual display resolution, which results in the image looking a lot softer than it should and potentially adding input lag. It usually just looks plain bad, especially if you're not using proper integer scaled resolutions to your monitor's native resolution. However, CRTs are pretty sharp through most resolutions. Sometimes some of the higher resolutions aren't as sharp as lower resolutions due to how some of the tubes work but for most usable resolutions, generally they're sharp no matter what you're throwing at them. This era of PC gaming was so much better because of this. You could run 60fps slower detailed games at crazy high resolutions, then drop down to 1024x768 or 1280x960 at higher refresh rates for some stuff, and down to 640x480 for older DOS games. And your image will look amazing through and through. On an LCD, it's generally safer to crank down your in-game detail than to lower the display resolution, though some newer games are finally releasing with separate render resolution functionality to help combat this. And all of this is delivered with no inherent added input latency, no perceivable lag. This is still mostly analog versus digital only on LCDs and LEDs. Digital equals processing time equals input delay. It's always there even if it's low enough that you can't detect it. However, generally speaking, analog means no input lag. It's not quite that simple, I know, but it's a good rule to keep in mind. Granted, if you're using a PC CRT with a video converter of some kind, there might technically be some added delay from that process, though good ones would add a max of one frame's worth of lag or delay to the stream. Just like with CRT TVs, PC CRT monitors have no latency, which is hugely important for many gaming enthusiasts. Heck, for a long time, Counter-Strike competitive players still preferred using CRTs for the high refresh rates and no latency up until very recently. While old games themselves are being adapted via their various communities to run on modern versions of Windows, if you still want to use your old childhood Windows 98 machine or build a dedicated Windows XP machine, generally that's only going to output VGA. You can get conversions to upconvert that to HDMI and then many cases that's fine, but the same games on a CRT don't always look so hot on an LCD. Some people just want the pure, authentic experience. Alternatively, some people want to use their CRTs on modern machines. Basic DisplayPort or HDMI to VGA adapters are alright for a basic setup, but they will add a tiny bit of input lag in some cases and they are very limited in terms of what resolution and refresh rate combinations they can support. Most are using old HDMI and DisplayPort specifications, and raw VGA to VGA analog actually supported a lot more bandwidth than early HDMI and DisplayPort conversions. 
If you want something truly capable of this kind of conversion, look to the HD Fury devices. They produce HDMI devices that can do virtually anything, including low lag, high bandwidth signal conversion. This isn't a problem if you have a graphics card with the analog pins still in the DVI connector. These are the four pins in a square around the horizontal big pin. This is referred to as a DVI-I connector with both analog and digital pins. And the last GPUs to be produced with the analog pins still included were the NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti and the AMD Radeon R9 380X. Then you can use a native analog DVI to VGA adapter and have access to your monitor's full capabilities. Maybe try out the custom resolution software too, if needed. Side note, the Xbox 360 actually had a specific VGA cable sewed alongside it to allow users who only had access to VGA and CRT monitors to play the system, which can make for an interesting experience. Most CRT monitors are a 4x3 aspect ratio. Wider aspect ratios did not become mainstream until a while after LCDs took over, but there are a couple options. You could try to hunt down some of the silicon graphics widescreen models of the late 90s like what Carmack used, though good luck, they are incredibly rare. But there's also the holy grail Sony FW900 and W900 16x10 widescreen CRT. It's 24 inches, probably weighs as much as I do, and is highly sought after by many enthusiasts, myself included. Been hunting for one for two years now I think, and no real leads locally. And. They're expensive. A lot of the more exotic monitors, like the 1995 1080p1, are old CAD 3D design monitors from the 90s, which have no on-screen display or on-screen OSD controls, and they have to be adjusted by specialized software, which can be quite the hassle to find and track down and use. Later ones are fine to work with, however. Most of the CRTs I have can even run 720p, that's 1280 by 720p, at 120Hz, which is awesome. And if you use custom resolution tools to run interlace modes, which it's still a CRT so you won't see interlace lines, you can frequently double the refresh rate, making it feel quite a bit snappier. But choose wisely, as things are not all sunshine and rainbows on the CRT front. Unfortunately, without the original manual, it can be hard to find the specs of specific CRT monitors. I've been lucky that a lot of the ones I've looked at have had some specs listed on CNET. I hope someone has archived their CRT pages, I'll be sad when they go down. There you can sometimes find the max bandwidth and horizontal rate to see what resolutions and refresh rates are supported. They're not always 100% accurate, but good for getting a glance's info at the monitor if you can't find anything else. Other times, like with this Impression 200VX that I have, there's not an ounce of information available by googling. I have not found anything. The size and weight can be a big deal, but it may not sound like it, but it really is. Once you start getting to the 20 plus inch size range, these things can weigh up to 80-ish pounds in some cases. It's by no means evenly distributed weight. It's all in the front. This 21 inch impression monitor weighs almost 70 pounds, as is this big gateway. While CRTs were built to last, the components do die eventually, and there's not many repair shops left that will touch them, and it's very dangerous to open them up yourself and work on them. The voltages running through there would put more than a little sizzle in your step. I haven't found anywhere local that to me that will touch them, which has been quite frustrating. A lot of these monitors were the ugly beige or white, which can yellow over time. Some Retrobright can take care of this, but it is extra work. This Gateway VX1120 that I got for free is a very high-end monitor with a maximum horizontal refresh rate of 121kHz, but it's very worn and dying. The screen is incredibly dark and almost unusable. I can try to open it up and adjust the dial to brighten it more, but they, that may not fix the issue and then it wouldn't be permanent. And now it's up to me to safely dispose of this 72-pound beast. And burn-in is an issue. If you find some that were in offices or healthcare spaces where the same screen had been pulled up for years on end, you'll have burn-in, such as what's seen on this IBM, which isn't really fixable. If it's light, such as on the screen here, you won't notice it much in game, but it cannot be obvious on scenes of pure dark or solid color background or something like that. Thankfully, most PC CRT monitors do degauss themselves upon starting up, but you also have a built-in degauss tool in the OSD menus. If so there's no need for a wand or coil if you somehow develop issues which require that specific fix. Sometimes you'll find one and someone has chopped off the VGA connector to recycle the copper. A lot of CRTs did not have detachable VGA cables, so good luck soldering a new one onto that mess. 
and if you bite off more than you can chew with a giant CRT, it's not something you can easily get rid of, either. There's the issue of physically moving it, sure, but it's not something you can just dispose of. You should never put electronics in the trash, but rather send them to recycling centers or send in programs such as through Staples, but it's actually illegal to put CRT monitors in the trash or CRT TVs. They are dangerous to waste employees and to the environment. Some cities have recycling centers you can drop them off at, but in the locations are actually nothing but a stockpile of these in a warehouse, as they have been completely unable to keep up with the disassembly process and the massive, basically, disposal of everyone's CRTs. If you do need to get rid of one, I highly request that you start with Craigslist, local Facebook seller groups, let go, and offer up. Don't expect to get much money for them, but to list it for free and someone will take it or put it on the edge of your yard near the street with a free sign on it and pickers will likely grab it. Some people can see the actual image flicker or refresh on a CRT monitor at 60 Hz. This is usually resolved by going literally any higher than 60 Hz, but it is something I see sometimes and it's definitely there. This can lead to users getting headaches from CRT usage, which can really suck. I did mention that they're not compatible with your old game consoles. There are some fancy multi-sync monitors that can do both, such as from NEC, but these aren't common. Instead, you would have to use an upscaler or a line doubler, such as the open source scan converter or RetroTink to make this happen. I love doing this. I have this running in my retro game room, running my older consoles through the OSSC line doubler means that I get sharper retro games blown up on my nicer looking PC CRT monitor, and it's still nearly lag free. I run the systems into their appropriate switches, either for component, RGB via SCART, or VGA for the Dreamcast, and then into the OSSC. Then I take the OSSC's HDMI output and run it through the HD Fury Nano GX to fit it to VGA, and we're good to go. This monitor can handle all of the full scaling modes of the OSSC, even five times from 240p. It's awesome. GameCube via component cables in the 480p 2x mode is amazing. But this is a complex setup and it gets quite pricey, so it's certainly not for everyone. For systems that already output 480p but through component YPB PR cables, you can just get transcoders that convert the signal without adding any lag. Just be careful not to get one that tries to scale the signal. You don't want a scaler, just a transcoder. Check out Key Digital for some of those. I'll have to try to have a couple examples linked in the description. If you want to buy a CRT monitor, look local. Facebook Marketplace or local Facebook groups, Craigslist, let go, offer up, driving around neighborhoods, avoid eBay. Everything is price gouged to take advantage of those wanting to get into retro gaming, and shipping these things is usually a death sentence. I actually bought two of these Impression 200VX to go together, but one got killed in shipping. It was sad. This is incredibly common. Press F to pay respects. Keep checking regularly. I have found the ones I have by creating a custom Craigslist search as a bookmark and just checking it weekly. Sometimes new things pop up. Most people don't even want money for these. In fact, some even offer money to have them taken away from their house. I can't make the choice of picking up a CRT for you. It can be an easy decision. Oh, pick up this old little monitor and enjoy peak display experience. Or it can be a super involved process, depending on how you want to approach it. Ugh. I can't, in good faith, blindly just say, yeah, go buy one. But I do think it can be a good experience for many with an open mind. I started with a small IBM with burn-in from a buddy, and now have five CRT monitors in my apartment, as well as a few CRT TVs. Ugh. There are options available to you, factors to consider, use cases to really evaluate, and risks involved, but a CRT computer monitor can be an amazing gaming and overall experience. If you want to get serious about CRTs, consider joining a Facebook group that I'm a part of called The CRT Collective, linked in the description. And we also have a PC CRT group branched off of it. I'm Eples Vox, and thanks for listening to Vox Talks Tech. I hope you enjoyed this fun video. It's by no means a complete guide, but should be enough to get you started down the rabbit hole should you desire. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more awesome tech content and random deep dives into topics that I care about into nostalgic tech and things like that, and consider joining our inner circle of Patreon subscribers where you can get early access to videos, behind the scenes, Q&As, special roles on our Discord server, and more. I'll see you in the next one.